Hey there, GSN Gems. It's your Jewelry Insider, Tara. And today we get to talk to gem shopping host, Alan, wow. and world-renowned gemologist. Thank you. How are you? I'm well, how are you? I am so great, especially speaking with you today. Nice compliment. You said renowned. There are other words that are used, but that's a nicer word. No, renowned. no not with Alan. <laughs> today Hi, we folks. get to talk to Alan about the September stone, the sapphire. Alan, Sapphire is amazing for many yes. reasons, but one that I want to start off with are the right. many different colors. Right, and that's important. A lot of people just think of blue. And in the trade, when we talk about Sapphire, that means blue. But there are party colors or multicolor Sapphires. There's orange and there's pink and there's yellow and green and purple and gray. And people wonder why so many different colors. It's the mineral trace element that changes the color. Usually it can be titanium, iron, uh, chromium, vanadium. All of those various mineral trace elements change colors within the sapphire. And it's all corundum. Ruby and sapphire are in the corundum family. Now, I'm glad you mentioned ruby. Now, friends, I don't know if you know about this, but the color red does not come in sapphire because right. if it's red, it is a ruby. It's a ruby. And that's because high content of chromium makes it a rich red. It can be dark, it can be light, many other, other, other stones, other parts of the stone, but that's the only stone that is red. All the others are called fancy colors in sapphire. Fancy, because if it's just a sapphire, it's blue. blue. Now, Alan, yeah. tell me, what is your favorite color of a sapphire? Wow, that's a tough one. Um, I love all of them. The Pod Paraja is a rare stone. It's a combination of orange and pink, or pink and orange. I think the best part is when it's a, uh, an orangey pink. It means in Salinese, the lotus flower or the setting sun on the Indian Ocean. And it's rare and it's beautiful. But the two favorites is you don't see them anymore, is a vivid deep purple. That's seldom ever seen and never seen anymore is green green sapphire. And why is that? Well, it's just not being mined anymore. It's so rare. There was a, sapphires are found all over the world. Blue, multicolors in the Far East, in Alaska, even here in the, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Kenya, in Africa, and even in Australia. And right here in the United States, there's the Yogo Gulch, Montana, sapphires are found. My favorite is the star sapphire. Uh, and because of Alan, he actually taught me everything I know years ago. Not really. He, he did, he did. <laughs> but because the star sapphire is really, the star is created by the imperfections within Correct. the stone. Exactly. The star, it forms uh, in three legs. It's root heel crystal, all perfectly aligned. And those three legs are 60 degrees from one another. That's six times three is 180. But then when they cab the stone, they fasten it round it. It's called pet pate or knob-like. It throws a reflection to the opposite side, giving you six legs. And it works out to 360 degrees. So when the stone is cut beautifully and properly, if that star is centered, dead center in the top, and those six legs come down the side unbroken, that makes a beautiful star, or in the gem world, asterism. And it's so gorgeous. And if you are a gem shopping watcher, you have seen many, many star sapphires because we have some beauties here. Now, I also want to point out a lot of times, especially with the royals, maybe not so much in the United States, right. we are seeing sapphires in everyday wear yes. for engagement rings. Tell us why. Well, in this country, we're diamond and watch oriented. The rest of the world is color stone oriented. Interestingly enough, so that's one, that's the main reason. Uh, around the world, they grew up with color stone. Here we're diamonds and watches. But as a little sidebar, and they're gonna be watching it later, my grandson, when he married uh, his beautiful new wife, and made us grand, great grandparents, uh, Ingrid wanted a sapphire as an engagement ring. So Barbara and I went looking and we found a beautiful Burma stone, that deep royal blue with just a peak of violet in it. And it's gorgeous. So and she gets pretty. more compliments. And the greatest part about it is she can wear it every day because of the durability. And she does. You know, we have the Moan scale of hardness. We talk about durability. 
in hardness of stone. We have the Mohn scale of hardness. It goes from one to 10. One being talc, like a powder. 10 being diamond. Number nine is sapphire. Sapphire is a very hard, very durable stone. Now, how would you care for that? It already has a really great hardness, right. but still, we need to know the care about the stone. Good, I think that's important. Uh, I think the main thing is when you put it with other jewelry, all jewelry should be separated. A lot of people just throw their jewelry in a box and it rolls into each other and bumps into each other. You'll scratch it, you'll chip it. But with all stones, you should have a jewelry box that's everything is separated. Now I have, Barbara doesn't have a jewelry box. She keeps them separate. I shouldn't say it, but she, I'm gonna get yelled at. She takes all of her rings and puts them all in toilet paper and, and writes on them what they are so she knows what ring she wants. Listen guys, I'm Barbara, sorry, Barbara. Listen, Barbara is <laughs> Alan's wife and she has lived with a gemologist her entire life. So she knows, she, she must know. She's a graduate gemologist. Alan, thank you so much well, for talking fun. with us today. Guys, it is so amazing. Every time I can sit and talk with Alan, Gems, if there's anything that you need to know about gemstones or jewelry, reach out, subscribe. We want to hear from you. We want comments, messages. Also, tune into our live show 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and also gemshopping.com. Gems, thanks so much, and we will be looking for you. Thank you.